We've just about hit the halfway point through 2021 with June ending just in a couple of days. And as per usual, we've gotten a lot of music over the last six months. So welcome to the Bar for Bar podcast. And this week, I'm going to tell you all about my favorite albums of 2021 so far. So a couple things to go through first. Uh, the other day, June 25th, which was Friday. It was the three-year anniversary of the first podcast, which, that was awesome. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the whole backstory, because I've said that a few times now. But, um, yeah, I'll link that. There's a podcast that I did, I think, last month. Uh, so, check that out if you're interested. Another thing is, the Book of Doom. I honestly didn't have time to do anything uh, for mm, food this month. And that's just because my schedule's been busy, so next month, July, I'll try to do two. We'll see what happens, though. Now, getting into the topic at hand, there's a few things that I will mention in terms of like what I was looking at. This, first of all, is not going to be a numbered list. It's just going to be the albums that I like, mostly because it's too early in the year to really give proper rankings, I feel, at least for me. And if you guys watch my reviews, or any of my videos really, I don't give ratings or anything for albums. I just say whether I like it and what I liked about it. And if I didn't like it, what I didn't like about it. So, there's that. Like, I don't really... I don't like giving numbers, because it... Like, yeah, people like it, but a lot of times people will just skip to the end, or wherever it is, and be like, ah, yes... That's my, that isn't how I feel too. Like, it's, it's not my, <laughs> it's not my thing. Like, I, I would prefer you to actually hear what I have to say about it rather than just skip to the end. Uh, also, this isn't going to be including everything. There's obviously been a lot of albums that came out this year. So these are the ones that I'm just able to remember off the top of my head. And the ones that, um, a lot of the ones that I've reviewed, really. Like those, like if I've reviewed an album, I liked it. So that's usually a good hint as to what is going to be on my list. But there's a few things that I didn't review, so look for that. Um, aside from that, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the list like in early June. So there are there are a few albums that came out. I mean, I'll mention them, but I'm not gonna really uh, get into them. <laughs> Or, like, say how good they are yet, because, you know, it's too early. With that said, getting right into the list, there were a few albums that came out early in the year. Uh, so, Slow Ties Tyron, and that one, I, so, I never really listened to Slow Tie prior to this, other than his features. But, this one was dope, because he basically did a double album, where he has his more... I guess well-known sound where it's more aggressive and just kind of in your face. And then he had the more like toned down side, you could say, where it's more personal and you, you know, get to learn a lot about him. And for me, who I've never really listened to him, like I said, that was a great introduction and it really made me a fan. Like, I was just blown away. Um, as far as how often I've returned to it, it's not not been a crazy amount but when it came out i was listening to it almost constantly so you know it, that's a big reason why it's there um the other one that came out early in the year i think it came out before uh slow ties album was nick cautions anywhere but here and honestly i haven't returned to that album uh really since it came out or since i reviewed it but it's definitely it's definitely just solid. Like, the whole album was just really consistent throughout. And I think that's why I wanted to mention it, at least. And I think even in my review, like, I said that this album is basically setting the bar for albums this year. Because it came out in, like, January? Let me see, when did I review it? Yeah, I reviewed it in, on January 18th, so it was really early in the year. So. It was just really solid. Like, there's not much for me to say about it. There were very personal tracks on it, which was nice. Because, again, like, I feel like 
we're kind of getting past the point where we want to hear about how much like just things rappers have and we want to know about them personally and i think this was technically his debut and he hadn't really put out any any sort of tapes in a while so it was it was a really solid debut album um and at this point i just don't know what month anything came out because for some reason everything's just been a blur to me <laughs> but the second one i have on my list and again not in any particular order because if you look at my list i had slow tie written first and then nick caution's album like near the end because i was trying to remember what else came out but anyways uh the second album is ian kelly kells the dead now this is i guess my bay area bias but also it was just a really good album because so ian kelly's from the bay from oakland but He's also, like, he works with Grand National, which, I mean, I got the Twice on Sunday hat on almost every video. So, I love Grand National already. And then, he's also signed to Jamla, which is one of my other favorite labels. So, it's, it was kind of just going to be a good album by default, I feel. And, that's, it's a really solid, a solid album. Like, I have nothing bad to say about it, and I've returned to that album pretty frequently. Like it, I listen to it every couple weeks at most, like at a minimum. Like I, it's a good album. There's, uh, what, wh I don't know how I would classify the album, but let's see. I think generally when I <laughs> when I review albums, I, I say a little bit about it. Where did it go? Um, there it is. And this album came out on February 2nd, or late January, because I reviewed it February 2nd. Um, oh yeah, so this album, the whole, I guess, theming of it is Kells is Dead. Kells being Ian Kelly's previous name, or rap name. And this is basically meant to be a rebirth of his music, and his, this whole thing. And he just does a really good job of it. Like... I, I keep saying this, but Bay Area music has always been, like, put into a box in terms of how it's normally expected to sound or what people think it's going to sound like. But that's not, that's only, like, one aspect of it. The Bay has so much more to offer, like, outside of the, like, typical music that you hear. And, I mean, I've said it in, in another video, like, the publications even in the Bay need to step up. Like, there's so much more out there. Like, yeah. It's almost like, like, um, publications in Atlanta only promoting trap music and making it seem like that is all that Atlanta has to offer. Like, what? No, there's way more than that. Anyways. It it was Kells Dead is a good album, <laughs> like it's it's so good. It's it's definitely definitely up there for me. Like whenever I do end up making well, when I do the top albums at the end of the year, it's it's gonna be on there. I can almost guarantee it. Um, also around that time, Mavi dropped his End of the Earth EP, which similar to Nick Caution and Slow Tie, like that was really my first time listening to him, and. I was very pleased. Um, it took inspiration from the Shel Silverstein book. I forgot uh, where the sidewalk ends, I believe it was. At least for the cover. Um, and then, what do I have to say about it? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Like, it's definitely short. It's an EP. I think it was like, yeah, 14 minutes, five tracks. Um, but yeah, it's like, I think the best way to say it, or um, best way to explain the album, or like if you're interested in Mavi's work, like, it's basically, he's one of those rappers that's kind of sound like Earl. Like, he's in that sort of camp. Like, the more lo-fi beat and like, raspy voice sort of rapping. But I feel like Mavi's a little bit, he's a little bit, uh easier to understand <laughs> like because early like he just kind of over 
like does the um the sound so sometimes his voice comes off a bit distorted and you can't really hear what he's saying with mavi it's a little bit clearer <laughs> um moving on i'm just gonna go through how i have my list because i don't want to <laughs> jump around too much but uh j cole the off season this one i mean we you you should have expected this <laughs> like j cole is just very consistent for me like i mean obviously i didn't really care for kod as much i mean it was i'd saw what he was doing and i accepted that but he he didn't really do what he set out to do with kod as well but with the off season he definitely changed things up so like one it just he just kind of announced it and then it dropped like the week after or something like that so that's pretty i mean that's new for hip-hop but him dropping a single is new for him like that's not something that he typically does and then i don't know just the album has been solid like he got a bunch of different producers he got features on it so he basically took everything that he normally did and just kind of threw out the window so now he's like, all right, cool, I'll mess with everyone else. And I think that's kind of important because he, like, for the longest time, just became a meme going platinum with no features, which, sure, you can do that, and that's fine. But a lot of people were, like, the biggest criticism, and the one that I tend to lean towards as well, is that he's very comfortable, and he just kind of stayed in his own pocket, meaning, like, just worked with similar producers like his people in his camp and just didn't have any features unless it was people that were again in his camp so actually no he when was the last time he had a feature like born center so yeah no it's, it's been a while since he's had a feature and given the feature run that he had like we knew something was coming like something really good so i'm I'm happy with the off season. It it met my expectations, and I still listen to it every once in a while. Like, but I'm weird with albums now. Like, if I'm gonna listen to an album or like a song from an album, like I listen to the whole album. I don't know why, but like I just have a hard time just listening to individual songs. But that's just me now. Who knows? Things changed. <laughs> um, moving on. Crisis. The Hour of Crisis. This one is interesting because when I first, like, when I heard the album was coming out, I expected to hear more Crisis rapping, and he was on, you know, a good good handful of songs, but it was mostly, like, it was a mix between him rapping and just him producing, and, you know, I mean, Crisis is a producer, so that's not surprising, but... I guess I expected it to be more of a solo album rather than him getting artists to rap on his beats. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, it still worked out really well because of the sequencing. And Crisis knows what he's doing. So it, clearly the sequencing was going to be good. We like that wasn't really a concern. But you know, it was it was different what I than what I expected, but it was really good still. And I mean, I think I said in the review, I hope soon that we hear more of him rapping in the future, but I'm also okay with him just doing his thing with producing. There was, it was really good. Um, that's one of those albums that I can probably listen to individual songs, I'd say, even though like it does flow well, like there's, there's a, there's songs you can kind of pick and choose out of it. I think there was only like one song that I really didn't, like I didn't like hate. I was just like, Eh, whatever on. I just don't remember what it was now. Um, <laughs> even, <laughs> yeah, there was also, like, the whole, like, run from, what was it? The Devil Wears Designer all the way to All Right, which was a significant amount of the album, which was just solid to me. So, it's it was hard for me to really say what was a bad song I, I don't there was just one that was just like eh, i just don't remember what it was exactly um moving on oh well yeah the crisis album i mean 
He's also signed to Jamla, so again, you kind of know what to expect with Jamla Records, like the sound. Like it's going to be a little bit more soul influenced. So if that's your thing, that's dope. I mean, Crisis also has a bit more, I guess, jazz and blues influence to him as well. So he's very, uh, he's just a really good, in, uh, he's a very good producer for sure. Uh, in other albums, <laughs> uh, T. Carrier, Terrence. Now, this is one of those that came out in June, uh, June 8th, I believe. So, this is kind of like this is uh, the main reason this is here is because it's fresh in my head. Like, that is one of the biggest reasons because you know, like, it came out what three, well, 20 days ago <laughs> as of today's recording. So, that's a little unfair. I mean, I mean, we'll see where it ends up on, um, like by the end of the year, but it was a really solid album. I really enjoyed it because, again, similar to a lot of the albums on here, this was my first major exposure to T. Carrier. And you get a lot of him in this album. Like, you get to know <laughs> about his life and how he feels, and like having his mom on it. Like, just on the intro, and, um, I forgot the other track. Like, it was towards the end of the album. I think it was 365. No, not 365. Um, now I'm gonna double check. But having his mom on both, like, two tracks. Um, let's see. It was Flowers. It was Flowers. The track Flowers. But, like, you know, just having her input and talking about him... I don't know, it just it just feels nice. Like you know, you have a, a parent that's proud of you talking talking about you on your album. <laughs> like that's that's just dope. Um I just realized that I skipped over one <laughs> when I cuz I was jumping around. But um anyways, T Carrier was that was a dope album. Like definitely one of my favorites this year. But again, like I said, it's very fresh in my head. So maybe that's a little unfair. Uh, anyways, one that I missed, because my list was all whatever, uh, Makami, Pray for Haiti. This one, similar to the others, well actually no, I, I did listen to some Makami before this, but this is the first time that I was able to really sit down and like try to understand the album, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because, you know, in the past, Mock's a little bit more... Uh, let's say, like, his lyrics are a little bit harder to understand. And that also comes from him, like, switching up languages halfway through his songs. So, you know, that's, there's that and not having his lyrics available online. So, there's a few reasons, but with this album, it was a lot more cohesive, I feel. It wasn't too long. It was pretty much just the right length, I'd say. and. It was just solid. I think the biggest thing that people mentioned with this album compared to his previous ones was the production and the just the mixing and everything. Because it was one, the production was a little bit more crisp, and then the uh, the mixing, like you could hear his voice a little bit better, like he wasn't being drowned out by the uh, production. But again, like I, my limited experience, I can't really say. I'm just going off of what I heard people say. Like, my, my experience is just, like, I can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> but, to be fair, I was listening in the car, and the volume was low, so maybe that's why. But, anyways, Pray for Haiti is definitely a... It's going to be on my top ten, for sure, this year. Like, it's a very, very solid album. And it's, like, it just flows well. And like I think I think I mentioned in the review, I was concerned when I heard that West Side Gun wasn't going to be um, executive producing it, only because, like, it, like I thought that he'd be on the album a lot more. And I mean, West Side Gun's cool, but sometimes he can be a bit much for me, like in terms of like his ad libs and like sometimes he just says outlandish things. <laughs> but you know, it's it's. It was good on this. Like, it didn't mess anything up. So, that was dope. Um, <clears throat> anyways, going back through it. Arm and Hammer, Haram. Now, this is one of those albums that I didn't review. 
And the only reason I didn't review it is because there's too much to say about it. Um, like, not that I can really, st like, properly convey. <laughs> like, there's just so much to get into it with, or get into with it. And I, I just felt like my review style, it would be a very long video. And not everyone would be there for it. Um, I might, I might go back to it, but, and review it, but we'll see, like, I remember starting to write the review, and I'm like, oh god, it's already so long, like, let me see, da 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 da, where are you, there you are, yeah, just with the, <laughs> just the introduction was very long, so, I, I realized, uh, maybe this is gonna be a long video, but, you know, Arm and Hammer, uh, Billy Woods and Ulysses, like, they're, they've been solid for a long time, and this is really just the first album that clicked for me with them, because it was produced by The Alchemist, and I think that's really what helped for me. I know it's not everyone's favorite uh, Arm and Hammer album, like, it's actually, like, like, people rank it kind of in the middle, but I liked it. Because it just clicked. I mean, I still have to go back and really try to listen to the other albums and see if, like, my mind has changed and, like, it, those work too. But this one, it just clicked, like, almost immediately, like, off the first listen. I'm like, oh, this is dope. Uh, I haven't returned to it as often, in all honesty. And that's really just because, like, for me, I have to kind of be in a certain mindset <laughs> for that type of music. It's just a little bit more... There's a lot they're saying. Like, there's a lot to really understand. And it's not something that you can very easily listen to casually, I'd say. Uh, and another album that I didn't review yet, or, well, not yet, because it's already, it's already a little late now, but an album I didn't review was the DJ Muggs and Rome Streets album, Death and the Magician. It was solid. Uh, I remember listening to it when it came out quite a bit. Like, I was, I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was, like, playing something, and I just had it on in the background, and it looped multiple times. And I was like, this is good. I really enjoy this. And then for some reason, I just didn't review it. I, I don't really know why. I think something else came out around that time, and, like, that just took up my time. Um, but yeah, this was a really good album, too. Um, really solid. I mean, DJ Muggs has been doing these collab projects with people just quite a bit recently. And a lot of them have been really dope. I haven't checked out all of them, but the ones that I have have been really solid. Um, also, Rome Streets is... I mean, I was going to say underrated, but no. Like People are definitely picking up on him. Like, he's, he's dope. Uh, I do have to still check out that album he did with Angle John, which people really liked as well. So, I'm sure that's going to be good. But yeah, he's, he's dope. And I think what I really liked about this album is that it was more... Like, it wasn't overwhelming in any particular way. Like, it, the bars didn't go over your head. Like, there was a few, sure, but it wasn't like he was just beating you over the head with lyrics. Um, but it, it was still dope lyrics. And then the production was unique. Like, it was just, yeah, it was different. I also just like the idea, like, there was a few tracks that were kind of themed around the whole Death and the Magician theme. So, I like that. Um, another album that I didn't review, but I started writing the review for, was 13, A Magnificent Day for an Exorcism. Uh, 13 is um, Pharaoh Monch, uh, Marcus Machado, and Daru Jones. And I think the reason, again, similar to Arm & Hammer, um, the reason I didn't review it is because the review is going to be really long. I got about, was it four songs into the review? And it was already uh, <laughs> almost as long as some of my shorter reviews. So, um, yeah, there was a lot to say on the album. And it's a, it's a very dense album. Like, it's also, also, it's not for everyone. I'm going to be really upfront about that. Like, like a lot of people like Feral Manch. I like Feral Manch, And I did really enjoy this album. But if you know Feral Manch, you know that he's a bit more um, 
rock influenced at times. And you can hear it in his normal music as well, like his solo work. But this album in particular, because he has a drummer and I think a guitarist. I, f- I forget what they play. I'm not going to lie. But he has people from actual bands <laughs> helping him with this album. So uh, it's definitely more of a rock rap album, which again, like I said, is not a bad thing because I did enjoy it. It's definitely not for everyone though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but it's also very political. Like it's very politically driven. Um, which my biggest criticism when I was reviewing it or started to write the review for it was that it came out at the wrong time. I know he's been working on this album for a while. Like, and you know, it's he's been mentioning thirteen for years, but it it coming out in twenty twenty one, in when did I start writing the review for it? At the end of January. I mean, I guess it makes sense because, or it works because of the insurrection on the Capitol. But given everything that was happening over like from 2016 to 2020 politically in the states it any time in there would have been a better fit i feel but yeah i mean it's i mean there's i mean there's a song just straight up like talking about the president i mean which would have been again very appropriate if it had come out on like you know the like earlier during that time um but that's just me i mean i still really enjoyed it but that was a big like ah oh, damn like, I don't know what made it take so long. I don't know if it was just that he didn't actually have the album ready in the me- like in that time. But because he's been talking about it for so long, I feel like there was something there. But I don't know. And, or maybe he could have just been waiting till afterwards. I mean, that's a possibility too. <clears throat> uh, moving on from that. I mean, there's only a couple more albums that I wrote down. Uh, Rap Ferreira, Bob Sun. Um, that came out on January 1st and I w- again, I was going to review this one, but it was way too dense for me and I, I would not be qualified to even talk about it. I feel it's, it's a very, um, what was it called? Like it's a very chill album that like you can just kind of throw on in the background. Um, I think I, I wrote down what it was called. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't remember what I called it, but, um, it had a very interesting, like, subgenre associated with it. Um, but it was, it's a really chill listen. Like, I did enjoy listening to it, but, you know, it's, it's one of those albums that, there's a lot being said and there's a concept that he's running with and I'm just like I I can't even I can't even get into it because um or I mean I can get into it but I can't get into like explaining it um because I think a lot of it was uh inspired or it was like paying homage to uh Bob Kaufman yeah and yeah it was an ode to Bob Kaufman and that's I'm not familiar enough with his work, so I can't even <laughs> really say how it fits in. Um, and now just into albums, like just a couple albums that uh, are a little, a little too new to really say for sure, but I'm probably going to mention or have them on the list, or they're very strong contenders. Your Old Droog, Time. That was a really dope album. I... I really enjoyed it. I mean, if you checked out my review, you could, you could see. But it was a really dope album. Like, this, like many of these other artists, actually, this was my first time really listening to them. And it was just, there was nothing bad about it. Like, it was just so consistent. And, I don't know, like, I don't know what else to say. Like, I, I said everything in my review, but, like, it was just a good album and i enjoyed every bit of it like there's really nothing that like i didn't like about it 
I think the only thing that I was like disappointed in is that I didn't listen to it earlier. Like, it's just so good. Um, I just can't say if it's going to be like, it's probably going to be on my list by the end of the year, but I can't say exactly yet because that's a little unfair because I literally just reviewed it. Same thing as uh, T. Carrier's album. Like, it's just too early. Like, I, I just recently reviewed these albums. So, uh, same thing goes for Ransom's uh, 7 album or EP, whatever he wants to call it. Like, that was very recent. Um, honestly, I don't know. Like, I have to really think about that one. I'll have to see how often I return to it. Oh, another one that I didn't write down. Um, Lloyd Banks, The Course of the Inevitable. That was just solid as hell. I think it was a good album. Um, I'll have to, again, I'll have to see like how much I end up listening to it after the fact. Because, in all honesty, I haven't really gone back to it since the review. But during that review period, I was listening to it pretty heavily. Although that could also be because I was trying to really understand the album because it was kind of long too. But we'll see. Um couple other albums I mean Tyler the Creator Call Me If You Get Lost that's um yeah I'm not going to go into it too much because I'm going to review it this week but it's really good so far um I mentioned that I was like out of town so I couldn't really um I didn't really listen to it heavily like in the sense I'm like really paying attention to what's being said but I had it on like pretty much everywhere we were driving and it was really dope. Like, sonically, it's a really solid album. Like, the production is dope. And then, like, I did listen to it, like, one one time really paying attention to the lyrics when it dropped because I, you know, I had that time. But it was dope. Like, the things that he sang is crazy. And for me, it really just does feel like a progression from... You know, really Well, either from his beginning or from Flower Boy going onward. Because each album kind of tells its own sort of story um flower boy being like in my mind him finding himself igor being like him trying to save a relationship and like getting over a breakup and then call me if you get lost where i mean he's being a bit more reflective on things that he's done in his past like personally like this is the one of the first times that we really hear from him directly like without it being kind of vague i guess so like we're hearing about particular instances in his life which that's dope to me plus this is a dj drama gangster grills album so <laughs> that's pretty dope too um but yeah like i said that's it's a little bit too soon to say too much so check out the review when it drops and then honestly it'll probably be on the list by the end of the year um another album that just dropped evidence um I didn't get a chance to listen to it yet, so I can't say, but I've been hearing very good things. Uh, I think that's, I think that's about it, though. Um, <clears throat> not a whole lot else that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, let me just run through my reviews this year. Uh, see, now, I would like to have DMX on there, but honestly, the album was... To me, just a tribute album and less of a DMX album, so I can't really say that it's going to be on my list. Um, the Zarface and MF Doom album, Super What, was pretty dope. Um, but again, I haven't really returned to it as much, so I can't really form an opinion. Uh, Marlon Craft's album, How We Intended, that was pretty good, but similar. Like I haven't returned to it as often. I really did like that one actually because it was him just kind of being more personal again like that's what we're getting into with artists now who are more or I guess less in the mainstream like public eye they're getting more personal with their music and I really enjoy that so that's dope um but yeah I mean I, th I think that's I think that's about all I got um yeah, I think I'll just cut it there. Uh, I could get into news and stuff, but honestly, it's already been going on for too long. So I'm just going to end it. So with all that, let me know in the comments below 
what your favorite albums are so far this year. I'm sure there's a bunch more that I've missed because, like I said, this is just a list that I threw together of the ones that I remember and the ones that I've been listening to. So it is very possible that I've missed something that uh, I have reviewed and listened to, <laughs> but who knows? But yeah, let me know. Uh, also, you know, like and subscribe if you want to see more podcasts and content like this where I just ramble on for a, an unspecified amount of time. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please stay safe out there.